Let's explore the insides of Ford's 10R80, the 10-speed transmission. It's an exciting unit. I think it'll be with us for some time. Everything I state in this presentation is information that I have found and, and learned about, and a lot of that comes from this book written by Bill Brayton of ATRA. It's actually quite good. I recommend it. Um, these are the tools. Uh, that's the holding fixture I happen to use. Uh, it doesn't take many tools to tear this thing down. Uh, you'll be using the 8 millimeter a whole bunch. Those are the sockets, the Torx bit, a pressure regulator. Um, there's a few tools I did go on eBay and buy, uh, made by uh, OTC and also uh, seal ring toolkit. There's a few other tools that I've made. You'll see, we'll, we'll cover those. So, here we go. Welcome to this little demonstration on the Ford's 10R80. Let's get familiar with it first of all. Of course, the dipstick, and this is no different and no different location than, say, the 6R60, the 6R80 transmission. And of course, again, this is older information, but I thought I would at least point it out. Uh, of course, the taggered, this uh, transmission uh, mount. Um, instead of having them both in the same plane, they're, they're staggered. And that's to fit these bosses from the factory. Okay, in the case. Um, I had to modify one nut. Uh, it sits kind of close to the case right here. I had to actually grind one of the six you know, sides to make it fit in there a little bit easier. But other than that, it's just eight millimeter bolts holding this on, which of course fits in this uh, uh, bolt-on or the, the clamping device here. And I think it's OTC uh, part number 7020. So, okay. Uh, the other side, of course, the manual valve. Well, there is no manual valve in this transmission. There's a manual lever. There's still even a rooster comb. And you can feel as you shift the spring loaded action, but it moves an electronic uh, manual lever position sensor. There's nothing uh, manually moving inside the valve body. This is totally an electronically controlled transmission. So, having said that, knowing that, uh, this transmission, if it loses power, um, here's, the, here's the big connector, if it loses power, you, uh, you are in park or neutral. There is no default or fail-safe mode. Uh, if the solenoids have, don't have any power, they are closed and will not pass fluid. Okay, one last thing, one last thing. There is a line pressure port. Here's where the cooler lines hook up, right? But right here's the line pressure port. And that's where you can hook up your hydraulic gauge and, and read uh, hydraulic pressures. Now this bolt here is, is that, it's a bolt with an O-ring. It's not a pipe plug like we're used to have had in the past. It's bolt thread, not pipe thread. So that is me uh, something worth worth mentioning. Um, this transmission was uh, given to us by by Ford Motor for training purposes. So I've only got a few bolts to remove and plastic pan. I guess that's built Ford tough. <laughs> okay. So the filter, uh, a service item, correct? Whoops, wrong one. And there's another bolt here. So two bolts remove the filter. Okay, a long and a short. That won't be too hard to figure out where they go. All right, I've already got one of these located. Now here's one of the neat parts about removing the valve body is the bolts, you don't have to remove all of these bolts. There's only eight bolts and they've all got a little arrow does that show up in the camera, that little arrow? And two more. You pull those eight bolts with the arrow embossed, that's embossed next to it, you can remove the whole valve body. But before I get to the valve body, let's go ahead and remove a little bit of the wiring harness and the auxiliary pump. This is for the stop-start feature. Okay? So, um, first of all, 
control that, excuse me, back. You slide it back and remove the connector. This is the same way. We're going to slide the connector out and push a little tab in. This one is a, 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 a cam, a cam lock. Okay, and maybe I should react to remove the, the auxiliary pump first. Let's do that. So, to remove that, first of all, I need to remove the little pickup tube. This pump will keep things hydraulically pressurized, so there's not a delay when you go to accelerate. One bolt and the little feed tube for the auxiliary pump is off. Okay, here's where I need the T30 Torx. There's three bolts here for the auxiliary pump. And I'll just go ahead and remove that. In my opinion, this transmission was made pretty, pretty serviceable. It's pretty neat. Uh, we're going to show you some other uh, easy access things for, for service. And, and again, one of these examples for me, again, is these bolts that are already identified you know, for the valve body before you remove it. Before I go any further though, let's go ahead and take a little more the wiring harness apart. You rock that out, it's kind of like a cam lock. Okay, and I'm going to undo this corner bolt. There we go. I'll allow that harness to kind of become free now. Um, I like the little connections here. Don't know if you can zero in on this little bit, but I'm going to go ahead. You got to pull this little red keeper. push it down, I push them both down, and then I use my little pocket screwdriver to push a little tab in here. I'll push a little tab. We'll do it again on the other side of the valve body. We'll have a better visual, I think, there. Okay? And this little black uh, piece pokes into a little hole there. It helps locate the wiring harness. That's as far as I can go with the wiring harness until I get the valve body out of the way. So we'll take out the remaining uh, bolts that have arrows by them. Okay. And let's see, there's four here. Four, five, six, seven. Uh, where's my watch? This just lifts right out of there. Okay, we're going to remove the wiring harness from the solenoids here. This uh, valve body has eight solenoids. Uh, these six over here are for the uh, clutches, the A clutch, the B clutch, and so forth. And these two over here, one is for the torque converter lockup, and the other is uh, uh, pressure control regulation. So, then we can get a better visual on this one. I'm going to actually push the little red keeper toward the connector. That's how I'll release it. And then my little screwdriver, I'm just going to push a little better here. Push it towards the little red lock device. Here's the temperature sensor, fluid temp sensor. It's on the underside of the valve body. So there's there's uh, part of the wiring harness. But while I've got while I've got it here, I did go ahead and label. Don't know if you can make out my my markings very good, but this is solenoid A for A clutch, F for F clutch, C, B, E, and D. So that's the order of the solenoids. So if you had a trouble code that related to one particular solenoid, here's their location. And again, uh, these two, uh, one 
is pressure control and uh, torque order lockup. Okay, we're going to take off the uh, transmission hydraulic pump next. Three bolts. It is gear driven. Okay. And the front of the transmission is not the pump, it's simply called the front support. But there's two gears we'll get to in a little bit that rotate this pump. This helps keep this design enables the transmission's design to be shorter. Okay, because this is off to the side. The pump's not in line with the rest of the transmission. And this can be taken apart. Um, if you've been around any six-speed by Ford or General Motors, you'll know exactly what this pump looks like inside and how to clean it up. Okay, about six bolts hold on the rest of the wiring harness. And this is the intermediate shaft speed sensor A, uh, intermediate shaft uh, sensor B, and there's, there's actually four speed sensors. I think this is the turbine shaft sensor and the output shaft speed sensor. So these are my four speed sensors that do all the monitoring, see if a shift occurred or not, and also part of diagnostics to uh, set trouble codes in case a ratio should have occurred when a certain clutch was applied and maybe it did not, uh, something slipping or failed to apply and the sensors did not pick up on a speed change and so forth. So those are my speed sensors. This little bracket here just simply holds the harness in place. And let's see, there's one more. Now there's one more thing, one more connection here, and this is the MLP, the uh, uh, manual lever position uh, sensor, manual lever position sensor. This is actually a pretty important sensor, okay? It's got uh, four wires that go to it, and when I move the manual lever, okay, and we'll, we'll get down to the rooster comb here in a little bit. It's the spring-loaded roller. Nothing new there uh, compared to the past. But if this is not if this is not in sync with what's you know if this sensor is not uh, reading correctly or not in the right uh, position, what have you, then you'll never the system will not know how to uh, energize the various solenoids to be in the right gear. If I, I need to be in drive, for example to have the solenoids and the PC, the TCM to know how to shift the transmission. And of course, here's my parking pawl rod, the little tooth or the big uh, spring-loaded piece down here. It keeps us in, in park. If I put it in park, now the transmission is locked, right? So let me go ahead and uh, disconnect the MLP connector. And um, I'll admit I cheated. <clears throat> Can you focus on this a little bit? Okay, so now what's left is the big, the big connector. And I got the pliers earlier and I pinched these little ears. They're kind of stiff, they're kind of hard. But once you can get those to kind of pinch down and, and work it in a little bit, I just kind of gently tap, gently tap and this harness all comes out together. Okay. Okay. I'm going to do one more thing with the MLP. There's a TSB where I guess this roll pin falls out. And to me, there's the only way to get the roll pin out is to have the valve body out of the way and get my cutters and kind of grip onto it. I'm not cutting anything. That's pretty hard stuff. But I'm actually going to grab it and I can rock it out. I can grab it and walk it out. Okay? Now, this particular roll pin has a little smaller diameter than the rest of the pin. Now, I don't know what the updated roll pin looks like, if it's the same look or whatever, but I guess these would fall out and the transmission, you'd be moving the, uh, you'd move the, uh, 
your manual lever, right? You're from park to reverse to neutral, etc., and there'd be no resistance when this falls out. And depending upon if this was in park or not, when it fell out, the vehicle could roll. Um, and of course, it wouldn't know how to shift either because it's not moving anything. Nothing's being moved down here. So to remove or service the MLP or this roll pin, um, once you pull the roll pin out, it hasn't already fallen out, you can uh, take off the uh, nut. This will be pretty easy to understand. You've seen this before. Okay. Here's the little you know, manual lever off to the side, and I can just simply pull the uh, manual shaft out. Okay. Parking pole. Here's the linkage that activates it. Of course, here's the MLP, the electronic component. The wipers that happen inside here. Okay, let's flip this transmission on its side. Turn the transmission so you can see the pry where, I, where we like to. It's recommended we get into right here and pry with a pry bar. Okay? I'm actually going to pry right about here. Okay? Maybe even here. Whoop, that's a better place. All right, let's go ahead and swing it back up so we can lift it up and then it'll be easier to see that way. I can't grip that with slippery ATF hands. <laughs> there we are. And here is the front support. We'll cover the front support later. I'll just set it aside. All right. So inside the transmission, okay, there's no, there's no paper gasket here. Should use a lint-free free cloth, right? Let's see. This is the A clutch. Here's the wavy. And we'll pull the A clutch and all that out later. But uh, the clutches are A, B, C, D, and E, right? And, and F. But uh, let's go ahead and uh, we'll just lift this out in one. Yep, it's ready. Steady it for a moment. So again, here's the A clutch, and of course the uh, wavy pressure plate. Now look what's neat about all the clutches inside this transmission. There's a little waved separator disc or, or a, a wavy spacer, sorry, spring. And what that does is it keeps the steel the steel pushed apart when it's not applied. To reduce drag. This is all an effort to improve fuel economy. See, there's not just one there, but there's one in between each disc, each steel. So here's the friction, here's the steel, here's another spring. 
And again, it goes on the outside. It's, it's a little bit bigger diameter than the uh, uh, frictions. Again, to push the steels apart, which of course will push the uh, uh, friction, really, low drag. Now the bigger, thicker one with a step on it, that's the one that goes down all the way and rests. Now, this big shell has a ring gear on the end, but yet it's driven from this end. So the turn planet four ring gear, it's driven by a piece up here. So that's why there's this big long cover. It really has a functional purpose, obviously. So before we remove the drive shell, what I'm going to do is partially remove this first snap ring. So I'm just kind of hold this and put it fall. And I'm going to go ahead and uh, find the snap ring and just kind of barely get it started. I just barely got it started. But, whoop, it wants to come out. <laughs> Let's see if it'll stay together. So I'm now going to take the drive, the whole drive, uh, this whole drive train. I'm going to let it go for a moment. I'm going to stick it in this hole in the bench. I made a two and a half inch hole. Oh, and there goes the bearings. <laughs> I got to grab the. Uh, okay, and this is actually the thickness shim. We'll get to that later. All right, but I'm going to go ahead and finish taking off this snap ring. Okay, comes off. Very easily. And now I can lift off the drive shell. And here's planet four ring gear and the drive shell. Again, it gets driven from a clutch here. That aside. So the next thing I can remove now, and it lifts right out, is the main shaft. Oh, don't forget about this. This bearing was right here without that thrust bearing, and it can't go in wrong. If you try to put it here, or upside down, I should say, it won't fit. If you have it the right direction, the bigger diameter goes up, it fits in that pocket nicely. So I'll put that inside the shell, so I don't forget about it. But next, I'm gonna pull the main shaft E-clutch assembly out in one. And there's the big, long main shaft. It's got all the seal rings, okay, for the various apply and, of course, loop circuit passages for the various clutches and such. And this is planet number three ring gear. In fact, the rest of the bearing just fell out, and this little uh, thickness washer, this thickness washer, sits in that pocket. And this thickness washer, I can't remember the direction right now, I think it sits with the washer up. Yeah, there's a little teeny uh, inside area of this bearing that sits in this little pocket nicely. Okay, so I'll keep that over here by that input shaft.